Good Thursday morning. It's March 3rd, 2022 here in beautiful Bellows Falls, Vermont. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bats Last. You can find Nature Bats Last at GuyMcPherson.com. If you go there upon release of this video, you will find the two papers, links to the two papers to which I'm going to refer. One from The Guardian and one from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. All right, let's start with the, with the story from The Guardian. Published Monday, February 28th, 2022, IPCC issues bleakest warning yet on impacts of climate breakdown. That's the headline, bleakest warning yet. Well, that sounds pretty bad. It's as if the IPCC is catching up with reality. The subhead, report says human actions are causing dangerous disruption and window to secure a livable future is closing. I'd say that window got slammed shut quite a few years ago, but maybe that's just me. Let's continue with a little bit of the information from The Guardian. The Guardian, of course, is a corporate media outlet, so they're making money telling these stories, and they are siding with the governments as they underreport the damage that has occurred so far and the likely changes in the future. And yet, they open with this lead, climate breakdown is accelerating rapidly, many of the impacts will be more severe than predicted, and there is only a narrow chance left of avoiding its worst ravages, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has said. Well, yes, that's all right so far. Story from The Guardian goes on. Allowing global temperatures to increase by more than one 0.5 degrees C above pre-industrial levels, as looks likely on current trends in greenhouse gas emissions, would result in some irreversible impacts. Now this is interesting for two reasons. One, we are well above the 1.5 C, above the 1750 baseline. Andrew Glickson in his book, The Event Horizon, published in October of 2020, indicates that we're already above 2 degrees C, above the 1750 baseline. In addition, the phrase would result in some irreversible impacts. Now that's interesting coming from the IPCC because in the IPCC's own September 24, 2019 special report titled the IPCC Special Report on the Ocean and Cryosphere in a Changing Climate, they concluded the IPCC concluded that many impacts are already irreversible. They indicated an overheated ocean was responsible for the irreversibility of climate change. And here's what they write on page 77. Ocean acidification and deoxygenation, ice sheet and glacier mass loss, and permanent degradation are expected to be irreversible on timescales relevant to human societies and ecosystems. And they quote five peer-reviewed articles in reaching that conclusion. So it's a little interesting that The Guardian and also the IPCC, which is being quoted by The Guardian, concludes that some of these impacts would be irreversible. Under the subheading chance to avoid the worst, the Guardian goes on. The assessment report is the sixth since the IPCC was first conven convened by the United Nations in 1988 and may be the last to be published while there is still some chance of avoiding the worst. Yes, almost certainly is among the last and perhaps the last to avoid the worst. The worst meaning human extinction, of course, although the Guardian would never admit as much. Again, this, this paper in The Guardian points out that some of these effects may be irreversible. Maybe. Despite the fact that the IPCC and The Guardian surely already know that climate change is irreversible as reported three and a half years ago by the IPCC. Okay. This is part two of a three-part, three-report series by the IPCC. This is 
The second part is produced by Working Group 2, and it deals with the impacts of climate breakdown, sets out areas where the world is most vulnerable, and details how we can try to adapt and protect some against some of the impacts. A third section, due in April, will cover ways to cut greenhouse gas emissions. And the final part, in October, will summarize these lessons for governments meeting in Egypt for the UN COP27 climate summit. COP27, meeting in Egypt. Huh. So, I can guarantee you that one of the prevailing themes at COP27, as has been the case for COPs 1 through 26, is that you and I need to reduce our emissions. You and I need to stop traveling. You and I need to stop turning on the lights. You and I need to conserve, conserve, conserve. Yes, that's right. COP27 is going to be held in Egypt, and I doubt if anybody's going to be taking a steamer ship there. I suspect there will be a lot of flying going on. Under the subhead, cataclysmic for small islands, comes this information. Small islands will be among those worst affected. Walden Webson, an ambassador of Antigua and Barbuda and the chair of the Alliance of Small Island States, called the findings cataclysmic. He urged the UN to convene a special session to consider action. He says, quote, We are continuing to head for a precipice. We say our eyes are open to the risks, but when you look at global emissions, if anything, we are accelerating towards the cliff edge. We are not seeing the action from the big emitters that is required to get emissions down in this critical decade. This means having emissions by 2030 at the latest. It is clear that time is slipping away from us, end quote. Having estimations by 2030 at the latest. I guarantee that's going to happen. In fact, much as I'd prefer otherwise, I suspect we'll be producing zero emissions well before 2030. The story from The Guardian ends with this information. Quote from Jeffrey Cargill, a senior scientist at the Planetary Science Institute in the United States, said, quote, The current warfare activity in Eastern Europe, though not attributable to climate change, is a further caution about how human tensions and in international relations and geopolitics could become inflamed as climate change impacts hit nations in ways that they are ill-prepared to handle. Oh yeah, ill-prepared is the best and most telling line of that entire description. Moving on to the paper itself from the IPCC Summary for Climate Policymakers in Climate Change 2022, Impacts, Adaptation, and Vulnerability. Under the subheading Observed Impacts from Climate Change comes this information, Human-induced climate change, including more frequent and intense extreme events, has caused widespread adverse impacts and related losses and damage damages to nature and people beyond natural climate variability. Some developments and adaptation efforts have reduced vulnerability across sectors and regions, the most vulnerable people and systems are observed to be disproportionately affected. The rise in weather and climate extremes has led to some irreversible impacts as natural and human systems are pushed beyond their ability to adapt. And they reach this conclusion with high confidence. And they refer to a figure, figure SPM.2, which is a series of dots showing in two words, we're screwed. That's the bottom line here. The IPCC is even admitting that we have progressed beyond the point at which adaptation is likely and almost certainly even possible. That's assuming that we're going to stop before we get to 1.5 C above the 1750 baseline. And we're already more than 2 degrees C above the 1750 baseline. So there you have it. In a nutshell, we're screwed, but I wanted to provide a little bit more information to back up that conclusion than just we're screwed. We've been in that situation for quite a long time, and I don't see us turning that around anytime soon. I wouldn't hold your breath if I were you. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for 
watching, clicking the like if you're so inclined. Also, feel free to share this video when it comes out on YouTube. Most of all, though, thanks very much for watching.